I recently mentioned briefly in a video that I was going through a stressful time in my life. And so I'm just going to quickly summarize what I'm going through. Uh, I'm going through a separation right now. Not my preference necessarily, but it's also my preference if that makes sense because I know it's something that needs to happen in order for me to grow as a person and for this other person to find what they're looking for. But that's not really what I want to talk about in this video. It's, I can say that it's been challenging. I've went through all the emotions with that. Uh, you know, there's periods of sadness, despair, anger, rage, and then there's these very euphoric, flighty periods where, you know, you're imagining all the possibilities of the future and what could be. And it seems to just be a, a zigzag back and forth between all these emotions. But what I can say is that survivalism and prepping, if you are partaking in these things, and if you are really doing these things, if you are going out there into the field, putting yourself in stressful situations and trying to get out of those situations, that is going to carry over into dealing with these everyday life crises, like the one that I'm facing right now. And what I've noticed is that my ability to process this stuff is just rapid. So an example would be the, the stages of grief and loss, uh, denial, anger, bargaining, uh, depression, acceptance. I find myself really fast tracking through that because I realize that I'm not going to let it interfere with my goals. I'm not going to let it destroy where I need to go because you can, it's very easily to, to crumble under the pressure of that situation to buckle and to just make a victim of yourself and be at the other person's bidding. And it's very hard to, to draw the line between pride and doing what you know is good for yourself. Like it's very easy for it, to, for it to come off as pride when really you're just trying to save face and be stoic in the face of a, what could be a very emotionally turbulent and potentially violent situation. Uh, not just physically violent, but violent towards yourself. Uh, the things you might do, some people just go off the rails, they start drinking, they start you know, uh, self-harming in some way, shape or form. And that's not what I'm about. Now with anybody in a situation like that with a major life stressor, uh, you're going to get instantaneous flashes of just wanting to end it all. Uh, for me, uh, suicide has never been something I've thought of for more than a nanosecond, but it's one of those things when when you're in, when you're faced with a problem, a crisis, a challenge, there's this Rolodex of solutions that start flashing through your head. Well, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. And for a lot of people, I think, and I can honestly say this, suicide is one of those things that, that it, it, more or less, it's going to flash into your mind. It's going to be uh, considered an option. For me, it's like uh, a nanosecond, literally. It's something I would never even consider in a million years doing, uh, not just because I have kids and I have other people to take care of, but it's just, in my opinion, it's just a waste because I know that there's incredible amounts of possibility and potential out there, uh, especially for somebody like myself, who's relatively young and, you know, I mean, not even an option. What it's helped me do survivalism and prepping is to fast track through that depression phase, because there's going to be a depression. There's going to be an anger phase and I tell you what you're doing right now is not a waste of time if you are actually going out there into the field uh, all those nights I spent camping uh, you know in the winter time all of the physical stress that I've put myself through the challenging situations that I found myself in in doing this Canadian prepper thing are all helping me right now get through this moment. I think that it's helping me three to four fold. 
I'm dealing with these situations much better than I have in the past. Now, part of that is just age. You know, you acquire more wisdom with age. You learn to let things go. You learn to not take things so seriously. It's not the end of the world when small things like that happen. It's not a small thing, but when worldly mundane things like that happen, it's not, not as tragic when you get older, but it's not just that. It's that all of these challenges that I put myself through have made me more resilient in the face of these things. So I guess the message I would like to communicate to you today in my experience, uh, this prepping and survival stuff, it's not just about prepping for crap hits the fan because it's gonna make you mentally stronger when you are faced with an inevitable crisis like that. It could be the loss of, you never know. I mean, heaven forbid you lose somebody really close to you in an untimely fashion, or you have a major, major financial problem in your life, or you're in a relationship and you separate, you divorce, you got all the stress that comes along with that. Whatever the case might be, what we're doing here is going to help us. So it's not just that if crap hits the fan doesn't happen, all of this is going to be in vain. Because it's kind of like sports. And I usually harp on sports a lot. I think there's way too much attention paid to it in our society. I think we waste billions of dollars which could be invested in so many amazing technologies that would uh, take us beyond the stars. But one thing I'll say about sports is it does teach kids something about, you know, like it does teach them social skills. Uh, that there are certain things you learn which can be applied to other areas of life, which is what I'm trying to say. And the same thing holds true with survivalism and preparedness. You got to learn to let things go and accept things and move on. It's very easy to let it get to you and just want to give up. But if you can be strong enough to see the reasons why and to see that if you're in a situation where you're with somebody and you're not empowering each other and you're constantly bringing each other down, but there's always that hope in the back of your mind that, oh, if we could just correct this one thing or this thing, then maybe we could start communicating in a way which was synergistic in the sense that we were both building each other up or that we're creating something new out of nothing in a sense. Maybe we could do that if just this happened. But there comes a point, man, where you just got to say, you know what? Uh, there's so many buttons that are being pushed. There's so much ego, pride tied up in this that it's probably not going to happen unless there's some major, major epiphany on both sides. It has to be on both sides. And you have to be okay with the fact that you're probably going to be better off in spite of the financial hardship that you're going to endure, in spite of the time that it's going to take. Because of course, two parents function much better than two single parents. There's going to be a lot of things that you lose, but there's going to be a lot of things that you gain. And I do believe that the things that are going to be gained from this are going to be better. And if chance has it that it works out, which is right now, uh, the, the chances of that happening are incredibly small. Uh, if chance have it that, it that it works out, then great. But it's not going to come at the expense of either of our well-being. I want to say that I'm not looking for any pity in this video whatsoever. Uh, you know, if anything, yeah, the odd wisdom is nice to come by in situations like this, but I'm not a victim here. Okay. I take responsibility for what's happened and I'm going to move forward in the best way I can. And so I'm not looking for a shoulder to cry on or, or anything like that. The reason why I'm doing this is because it's a good video topic. I really do genuinely think that survivalism and preparedness have helped me to mentally prepare for this life crisis that I'm in right now. And it's, it's not a crisis. What's the Chinese saying that uh, there's a word, the same word for crisis is the one for opportunity. So you can look at it in both ways. 
So I don't want to hear all the, the usual stuff like, I'm sorry to hear what's going on with you and your family, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, I don't need to hear that. I mean, I understand you're just trying to be polite, but I, I don't need to hear that. It, it's kind of like saying to somebody, I send my condolences to your family. I mean, what does that really mean? You know, it's just, it's an obligatory thing you say in those instances. Instead of that, what I'd like to see in the comments is you talking about a challenging situation that in your life that you had to overcome, how you overcame that situation. That's going to be far more valuable to myself and other people who may be in the process of moving through something like this than, you know, just some uh, small talk about your condolences. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned because the best is yet to come. Canadian Prepper out.